lowering your head. <laughs> storm may seem violent and destructive to us, but to nature, it's a new beginning in the cycle of life. Developing and planning. 
planting crops that thrive on salt water. Wow. In Japan, we're learning that by mixing leaves and other living materials into our soil, we can make farmland more fertile without the need for chemicals. Wow. Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for chemical pesticides by breeding and using natural predators, like ladybugs and wasps, to control pests. In the farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In arid regions, we're learning to produce the cost How will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce healthy harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy leaf of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. Not real. One day, many of these lesser known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. Like that, I'll put it back. These plants are 
Get the football ball. Oh, I'm making. Okay, I'm making. While more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer. I'm not blocked. Take a plan. Red pepper. Beneficial insects that prey on like aphids and flies. I'm not. Look at this. Conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year. Look, guys, we can all stay! Oh, Mickey! Mickey, eh? Look, Mickey. Ah, bumpkin! Look at this! Some I'm of our best have been inspired by nature, like these three vegetable trees. By growing oh, these bumpkin. crops, we can increase the yield and better control diseases. These crops taste as good oh, as they do. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses in restaurants here at the land every year. <laughs> The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants. And the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, FDOT scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. I'm gonna do like it. Awesome!